Now you can go, mate. Thank you. Um, I guess we'll start with Boxing Day, you sir, and that win over Blackburn. How do you look back on that win? Yeah, as you know, like uh, we had a been tough period before that last game we won, uh, but we bounced back and we won the game, and yeah, we were satisfied with the result. Yeah, and then we will see like next game. It, it felt like on Boxing Day that Huddersfield Town were at it from minute one. There was high pressing. You were winning all the duels. Do you feel that as a team that you really deserved that win on Boxing Day? Yeah, I think so. We had a good performance. We had a good, uh, solid defending. That's the important thing, I think. And what had the manager said to you in the lead up to that game? Uh, he said they're good winning, but uh, as I said, like we just uh, look at the next game. We ju- we just needed to build performance up a bit better. Yeah, how important is it to follow up that win with yet another win tomorrow night? Um, yeah, the last game, so uh, they a little bit donated the game, but we just like was patient and we had a good uh, block and defending, so. I think that's a uh, connects to, like good counters. Yeah. For you, for you, for you as a team, you to it, it's been a tough first half of the season. Just just tell us how it's felt as a player and and for your teammates to have that winning feeling back. Mm, yeah, I feel a little better. Yeah, as I said, like we had a tough period, really tough period before that win. But I think the uh, winning like. Uh, gave us a, like uh, big energy, so we just like uh, try to win the next game as well. You've played under a number of managers since you came to the football club. How have you found working under Darren Moore? Yeah, he have good uh, energy and good uh, like uh, management. So yeah, and also he like try us to like uh, build a performance every single uh, games. So we just focus on the performance. So, uh, as I said, like we need to build the performance better next game as well. And do you feel that you are building? Yeah, I think so. I, I'm interested to to ask you personally, you to how you're feeling this season because if we take it back 12 months, unfortunately, you'd you'd suffered your injury, you'd you'd missed out going into the World Cup, which we know from speaking to you, you were so devastated about. How do you reflect on the last 12 months for you personally? Um, to be fair, like, uh, uh, I didn't really get that uh, injury now because uh, I get feedback and also like uh, that period that I got injury uh, gave me like a chance to be stronger. So, and then I can feel that now uh, at this time, so do you f- go on. Yeah, it's alright. <laughs> I, I was gonna say, do do you feel now you're in this place and you've you're back to full fitness and you're having that run in the team that 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 twelve months is behind you? Yeah, I hope. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> um, Middlesbrough the visitors then tomorrow. They had a defeat at the weekend to Rotherham. It would be the best way to close out twenty twenty three with a win at the John Smiths, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think uh, tomorrow is going to be a good game. So, yeah, we need to win in a row. So, yeah, I, I, I just want to focus on the next game. And to get back-to-back wins for the first time this season, if the atmosphere is anything like it was on Boxing Day, it will be a really good occasion to do so, won't it? Yeah, I would like to uh, show the, our performance and uh, winning to the fans. Great stuff. Best of luck for it and Happy New Year. Thank you very much, you too. Cheers, Louis. We'll just come to Stephen from We Are Terriers in the Room. Hi, Ita. Um, was it important to you as a group not just to get that first win for a long time, but to to win 3-0? Does that make a difference at all to the confidence and mentality around the group? Yeah, to try to yeah. So, yeah, the performance side is really good. So, yeah, I think it deserves it to win. You talked about how... Darren Moore wants you to sort of build your performances game on game. Did it feel like that that performance you got the other day was was coming to the group? Yeah, I think, yeah. 
it's really like affects the, our performance uh, from that winning. So yeah. So as I said, like it's more, most important thing is to keep uh, maintain performances or uh, try to build up the better performance. So you've been quite important to the way that the manager wants to play. You know, you, you offer a bit more on the ball than perhaps some of the other defenders. Is that something Darren has talked to you about about wanting to see you? Uh, offering something on the ball and, and helping to build the attack from the back? Yeah, he said, uh, always said to me, like, uh, every single drill, uh, we need to win. Otherwise, uh, we were, like, not good. So, yeah, I think uh, he I think uh, he has a, like, good feeling if I have uh, on the ball. But off the ball is important for me. So, yeah, he always uh, speak about that to me. You've been pretty solid on that front. Are you, are you pleased with your defensive performances as well recently? Yeah. In terms of the last game, so I think uh, average. <laughs> but also, like I want to improve myself every single game. So, yeah, I want to uh, show it that better performance to the fans tomorrow. I'm sure you won't want to leave, but we might lose you next month to international duty for, for a while. Um, when do you expect to, to hear about the squad, the Japan squad? Uh, right after the lesson. Okay. So before Man City, so I don't miss it. It must be um, important to you to, to, to get that opportunity. If you do get that call, it'd be quite a proud moment for you, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's a big, big uh, tournament, so we need to get back the champion, so... Does it feel, and I know you don't like to sort of dwell on it, but the fact that it is in Qatar, where obviously you missed out on the chance to go to the World Cup, does that make it feel a little bit more, especially if you do get that call up? I don't know. Uh, I've never been like uh, Qatar after I got injury, but I missed the World Cup in Qatar. Yeah. So I think it reminds me of the, I don't know, injury or the memories that I spend the injury time. But I don't know about. I think uh, it's important to think is focus on the, that moment. So, yeah, I'm going to try to be a champion. That's it, yeah. Well, best of luck. Thank you, Yuta. Thank you. Cheers, Stephen. And we'll just come to Stuart last on the, uh, on the laptop. Hi, Yuta. How are you? Hi. Good, thank you. Yes, good, thank you. I just wondered if you could tell us a little bit more about the work that you did when you were injured. You said you, you worked hard on making yourself stronger. Was that physical work, mental work, a bit of both? Uh, to be fair, everything, yeah. Uh, but the uh, big thing is uh, physicality. I think uh, the injury uh, gave me a uh, like, uh, chance to think about like uh, how important I need to use to be uh, this intensity league. So yeah, that's, that's the most important thing. So I think uh, I spend a good time and then my body is like really uh, getting strong, I think. Was it was the intensity the big difference you noticed at the start of last season? Yes. Uh, in terms of like uh, my career, like I was playing the, in the Netherlands. If I compare with that, yeah. I think intensity is totally different. So yes. that's why I need to I needed to use to that intensity the last season. So are you are you feeling the difference for the for the work that you did? Do you feel much? Better, better yeah. physically for it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's getting really even much better now. So, yeah. yeah. Now, that's why I think I can say, like, the period I got injury was a great time. Yeah. And uh, this time last year, were, were, you, were you back in Japan? I just wondered if this is the first Christmas football you've experienced. Oh, sorry. Uh, were, you, were you in Japan this time last year doing your physical work? Uh, yeah, a couple of weeks, but most of the time uh, I wasn't here, so... Yeah. No, I just wonder where, where you were last Christmas, if you if this is the first time you've seen English Christmas football and yes. if it feels any different. Yes, uh, yeah, it's really different, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really different, but uh, I can... Uh, I like both, like Christmas, Japanese style and English style. Yes. But um, do, the, do the football matches feel different? You often see more families, bigger bigger crowds. Did the John Smiths feel a bit, bit, you know, a, like a really good atmosphere the other day? Yes, it's a, it was, yeah. Uh, fans yeah. Like, created a 
really like nice atmosphere. That's also like affects uh, our well winning last game. Yeah, and this is a, this is a really difficult league to 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 back wins up in to get consecutive victories in, isn't it? Because of how often you play, and we often see with the results the team will have a really good re result and then a really poor one. How, how difficult is finding that consistency? Mm. It's hard to say. <laughs> yeah, of course, football is like opponents is every time change. So, yes. Yeah, I think uh, we need to keep our performance every single games. I think if not, uh, we would be like uh, not good performance. So that's most important thing is for me, like to maintain good performance every single game. Yeah. And and is that is that mainly about how you recover after games? Is it is it a mental thing to when the games are so close? I think this period is really like all, a lot of games in around Christmas, so I think yeah. physicality like is need to get good recovery and mental as well, but mainly like yeah, physicality is important I think. And, and because you did so well against Blackburn and you're at home again, do you think that that would be a, a really big help? The stadium should be really positive again and another good atmosphere? Yeah, it's the winning was really positive. Uh, this thing is, uh, the stuff is all said to me and to us. Uh, yeah. But uh, we can share like the thing which is like uh, to build the po that performance yes up so yeah uh, we were happy to the result we are happy with the result but we were not like 100% satisfied with that so we just need yeah. to focus on the next game and and because of everything you went through last year do you find yourself enjoying football more appreciating it more because it it was taken away for you from you for so long yeah i've been enjoying every single game and every single moment because the last season was like really sad to me yeah <clears throat> and also like fitness is uh, all back already so yeah also uh, tomorrow we need to win so I would I will be like a part of the winning the member yeah yeah excellent thank you very much for your time Yuta thank you very much thank you very much thanks well done Yuta
Louis, whenever you're ready, mate, take it away. Great stuff. Thanks, guys. Well, Darren, good to see you again. Um, I guess we'll have to start with a bit of team news. How's uh, Chris Chris Maxwell getting on after the game against Blackburn? Yeah, no, he's um, we we we're just you probably just picked me really from finding out clean in terms of where he's at because obviously the the the, the timing to, for the medical team to get hold of him and uh, with us just finishing training and coming in and me jumping straight on here. Um, I'll probably catch up with him a little bit later to find out with him. So really, on regards of any of the injury concerns in that, you know, I'm catching up with the medical team um, a little bit later on today. I guess it's it's one of those positions, goalkeeping, you want to be reassured as soon as possible. But on the flip side, Jacob Chapman on Boxing Day, what did you make to his performance looking back on it? I, I, th I thought credit to, um, to Jacob in terms of how he came in and performed. The biggest word I can use for his game was he kept it solid and clean um, and didn't risk anything really, which was credit to him to coming in at that difficult time. But it showcased, you know, why, um, you know, he's been on the bench and in terms of how he's been training and performing. And uh, I was really pleased for him coming in at that time and for one so young to come in at the time and have his concentration levels at that and contribute to the team at that time was uh, tremendous, really. And Lee Nichols, another one of your goalkeepers. How's Lee's recovery going along, Darren? Yeah, no, he's with the, the, the medical team. And, and um, when I say the medical team, the doctor as, as such, really. And only when the doctor really um, gives me like sort of the, the thumbs up with him, which again, it's somebody who I'll be speaking to later on today uh, on, the, on his matter, really. Um, but that's where Lee's at at the moment. He's in uh, the medical team's hands. Just just quickly back to Chris coming off the pitch against Blackburn and, and maybe the initial diagnosis. Are you confident he'll be back tomorrow, even before you hear from the medical team? Are, are you hopeful, Darren? I'm always hopeful, Louis, un until the medical team tells me otherwise. Um, and I have to be and I have to have that approach, really. And then only then when I, when I get to see and speak to them, um, to see wherever, what level he's at, um, then we'll go from there, really. So um, I'm always hopeful in that until um, I speak to the medical team and we'll see where that is tomorrow. Ben Jackson was unwell on Boxing Day. How's Ben getting on? Yeah, we're hopeful that, um, that Ben can um, sort of be back and be part of the group um, tomorrow. But again, we'll assess him really over the next 24 hours because... Obviously, um, he was ill and, un un and unavailable, really. So we'll check on Jacko as well and, and see where he's at. Danny, we know Danny Ward, he missed the Norwich game through an Achilles problem. Is it is it still the same situation for Danny? Yeah, no no Wardy uh, for tomorrow. Uh, so, so he's still out. For you, Darren, then, going into the Borough game and, and looking back on Boxing Day, just how good does that winning feeling feel, Darren? Yeah, li listen, uh, Louis, any win, um, whether it be home or away at this level, um, is greatly appreciative and received because we know um, winning in this level, in this league, we know that the, the competition's fierce and we know that our opponents that we're up against are good teams and we're never deluded by that. So to get the win, uh, it's always something that we aspire to try and achieve and do with each and every single game. Um, and when you do do that, it helps that it solidifies the work that you've done with the group um, and you come out with the right positive results. So we had that and um, we quickly move on because we've got another tough one to encounter on, uh, tomorrow evening. It, it was one of those games watching on, wasn't it? Your side were first to every ball, there was a high press, there was that hunger, there was that desire, Darren. Just... How satisfying was it to see that and to get a win in such a style? Not not just you know grinding out a win, but thoroughly deserving a win. Yeah, and, and it shows again, you know, that the the process that's going on here with a group of players and us working together as a group um, and getting a level of understanding um, and the time process to to sort of start getting those performances. Um, and trying to continue those performances. And I think that was the most pleasing thing, really, in terms of that, the work that we'd been doing um, and the players applying themselves in the right manner and, and, and getting the right energy levels. 
um, and giving the right output with the game was huge for us really in terms of that because obviously Blackburn are a good team and moved the ball around really really well but um, uh, yeah we took the game to them and we got the all important goal I think the goal you know Jaheim scoring the first goal just settled down one or two and give us a platform to build from uh, and we managed to maintain those levels and, and go on and get a further two more goals which was really uh, satisfying for us really and, and the other thing as well was getting a clean sheet so all round it was a good performance and a, and a good result And for you the, the next challenge is getting back to back wins the first time for the football club this season what's your message been to the players because I guess as good as that win is on Boxing Day backing it up makes it ten times better doesn't it? Absolutely and and that's got to be <clears throat> the the, the, the focus for the group and for the team um, and for the supporters coming there to, in terms of tomorrow night getting right behind the team um, and making the John Smiths as loud as we know it can be um, and driving the team on and I thought we got that from the supporters you know certainly when we scored the first goal and then when Jacob Chapman come on it really galvanised the, 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 the ground and the atmosphere it was great um, and we need more of the same from everybody that's turning up on behalf of Huddersfield Town uh, Football Club really to play their part tomorrow night. Um, and that's what it'll take, those those ingredients over and over and increasing them over and over uh, to gain results at this level. I know you don't really like to single out individual performances, but I'd like to ask you about Delano and, and just the energy and the aggression he brings to that forward line. How impressed have you been with Delano since she came to the football club? I know I've been really, really pleased with Del, as, as I call him really here. Um, I think he's, he's, his energy, his output, um, his unselfish manner in terms of the, what he, his work rate for the team um, is second to none really. And, and he can be a consistent threat because of the speed and ability and the size that he's got. Um, in terms of um, linking up play and stretching opposition opposition defences. I think the beautiful thing for why we're talking about Dell is because he's scoring goals. And I think that's the main thing for him really is that he's, he's coming scoring goals and that's the reason why we're speaking about him. And then all of a sudden we start recognising what he gives the team in terms of on the ball and off the ball. So long may that continue. Um, and hopefully for him, he'll get stronger and stronger as the games go by. But um, no, he, he had a big um, output for us the other night and, um, and played a, a wonderful part in the team, getting those three points. I know a lot of supporters have been talking about it, Darren, but have conversations taken place about making his move permanent? No, no, com no, no none at all, really. Um, what we just do is just focusing on the games because we know in the games coming thick and fast, there's there's a lot to contend with before we come to that. I think, Louis, when we talk things like that, the right time will approach naturally to discuss that. Uh, but the here and now, we're just focusing on which is the games and that's what we'll continue to focus on. That win on Boxing Day, five points above the bottom three now, Darren. That's a nice cushion for you as a manager to really build on and get that gap bigger, isn't it? What I, what I tend to look on and, and which I try and echo is the fact of looking what's above us and looking to catch what's above us really and and just really trying to change the, the, the mindset of the club in terms of looking above and, and instead of what's behind really because I think when you keep consistently looking behind, you attract that. You know, whereas I suppose it, the, the the way I'm looking is above what's above us in terms of us gaining ground on the teams above us. So that's the way I would look at it. And I've always maintained and looked up upon that that approach and I'll continue to look at that. Um, and that's where we've been at. It was a wonderful um, win. Um, it moves us in the right direction in terms of what we wanted to do. And in terms of trying to have a successful season, we've got to try and keep consistently um, picking up results like we have against good opposition in order to continue moving this club in the right direction. So um, it was a wonderful three points, but we know um, there's plenty, plenty more work still to do. We've spoken, haven't we, at times uh, that there was some frustration creeping in with, with the amount of draws and not turning them into wins. And I know it's always easier to look back after three points, but... Uh, looking at it as a glass 
half full rather than half empty? Do you look back at those run of draws and think actually they're good points? Any any points in at this level again, Louis, are good, you know, um, because they're they're hard to come by, um, and the real line between success and and what you deem failure is very very thin at this level, and so what we've uh, always maintain to do is to try and go and win games um, and it's and it's sort of uh, transpired that most of the games have turned into draws but we, we've been a whisker of way of winning the games as we've seen or you know we've managed to come back and compete and get our note and get back into games so it's it's always a, a good ingredient to have with the team obviously when you do pick up a three points then it makes those those draws look a little bit more favorable um, but also our outlook will always be to try and win games and continue to do that. So, And that's going to be our maintain our focus going forward. And that turns to tomorrow night against Middlesbrough. Lost at Rotherham at the weekend, so they'll certainly be hurting. But it's another side, really, who were maybe talked about as promotion contenders at the start of the season, but have yet to really find that real consistency. Probably other than... Ipswich and Leicester in the top two, maybe Southampton now. It feels this season in the Championship, a lot of teams have struggled to find that consistency. It's it's been a tough league so far. Can you can you quite put your finger on why that is, Darren? Louis, you've just hit the nail on the head. It's a tough league, and you've answered your question there. That's the reason why there's the, the consistency has been in between, but not just you. You probably named three or four teams, and then the, probably the rest of us has been probably been what you'd probably use the word probably inconsistent and that's because the league's a tough league and on any given t day anybody can beat anybody um on any given day and, and there's not an outward right to for people to predict a score it's just on the day really in terms of it and that's why i spoke about earlier and you've just echoed it it's a tough league that we're in um and as i said you know we as a as a team and as a club we're just focusing on the game tomorrow um tomorrow evening and, and just making sure that we're best prepared and focused for another game that sh that bowls well for another great footballing match um, a game where you'll see both two teams at each other really again uh, and, and, a, and, a, and a game where both teams will be trying to vie to try and get those three points um, tomorrow evening so we expect another tough game we know it's going to be another tough game but our mindset as we go into each game is they're all hard. There's, there's no easy games really, and, and that's always been our focus, and will remain our focus with each game. Certainly a tough game, but such a massive opportunity, isn't it, to end the year on a high? Absolutely, um, in front of our home fans at the John Smith Stadium, it's a it's a marvelous uh, arena to go and play your football under the lights, uh, and when the the crowd's in full voice, um, you know it's a special place. And I, and I keep echoing that really here because uh, I really truly mean those words really. So um, it's the it's the last game of this year uh, as we turn and go into the new season. So we're at home in front of our home fans uh, and we're encouraged and buoyed by that. For you, Darren, just looking back on 2023, you had the roller coaster of the League One playoffs last season and then coming into Huddersfield Town. How, how do you reflect on the last year for yourself personally? No, it's been a, a, a year, um, certainly for myself, that's been um, sort of uh, been full of so many different obstacles, but uh, one that I mean, I've been encouraged by and, um, and one that um, I feel a sense of satisfaction, but also one that um, what I look back on and, and it will help me grow as, a, as an individual uh, going forward. And, and certainly the, the experiences from 2023 um, I'll certainly want to take them with me into 2024 um, and be present at this football club. As I said, for me as a manager, to manage this football club is an honour and um, I'll continue to work as hard as I can um, to continue to turn the fortunes of this football club around and enter into 2024. Well, best of luck for tomorrow and for Leicester on New Year's Day. And Cheers. thanks for all your time over the last few weeks. Cheers, Louis. Thank you. Nice one. Cheers, Cheers Darren. We'll just come to Stephen Chicken from where Terry's in the room. Hi, Darren. Um, are there any new sort of doubts or returns potentially for, for tomorrow? Um, just uh, Jacko really is the yeah. one really for for us really tomorrow that we that we're looking at really in terms of to add to the group uh, for tomorrow. Okay. You, you used David Kasumu in in that role. Um, it it 
suits a lot of his skill set, doesn't it? We've seen him play there before, but you've talked a lot about bringing balance to the side, and he helped do that. I felt like. Yeah, I think I think for Cass, David playing in that in that right hand side was was excellent for the team, and he was able to be adaptable. Um, as we said, as we approached the game, and it's credit to him um, in terms of um, keeping allowing us to keep the balance and the fluidity of the team. Uh, and not only that, I thought he had a good, great game, really, in mm-hmm. terms of um, what he did there for us in both parts, in, in possession and out possession of the ball, really. So um, credit to him um, in his adaptability and, and, and what he gave the team. The side have a really positive record with that midfield trio as well. Hog, Radoni and Wiles won uh, four of the five wins this season. They come with those three in the middle. Is that a group you would like to keep together, ideally? Yeah, you want to because remember that they've not played together for injuries. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason why they've not played together and we've not seen that combination for such a long time because obviously Ben's been injured as Jack's been injured. Um, so it's been nice to get them in there as a trio um, and building that confidence and understanding amongst each other and, and you've just um, reiterated the record with them in there and it just goes to show that when they're in there as a trio, um, they're understanding, they're well balanced and they understand each other's game really, really well. And it gives the team a good structure and a balance, as I said before. Um, but the only reason why they've not seen them there this season is through injuries, really. But So it's nice to have them back. I think notably we saw a lot more players getting into the box. Those are, Obviously those two players are naturally want to get in there. But I thought looking back at the Norwich game and then the Blackburn game, it was sort of night and day. Is that something that's important for the players to maintain and having that boldness to get forward like that? Yeah, and I think as well, Steve, that you'll see that, again, um, as part of the process, we felt that we've had a a system in place. Mm -hmm. And as I spoke to you before, that when we start getting one or two back off the the treatment table, you'll see a change in the team. Um, So it's, it's probably what, you know, we've identified that we've spoken about, but we've seen it come through to fruition, really. Over the, over the the games and hopefully um, we can continue to do that. It's something that we desire to do, but we always remember that we're against opposition that's trying to stop those things. So never ever you get two games ever the same, uh, even though your intent might be the same to try and do that. You won't ever see it, uh, two matches the same, but it it um, it won't change the intent and the thought process in, in trying to maintain that level. I suppose that's going to be one of the priorities for January, won't it? Making sure that if you are, you, do, you know, t- injuries are going to happen, that if, it, if they do, that you've got other players that can come in and, and help you do the things you want to be doing. Yeah, and I think that's been the, 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 the biggest thing, really. And, and, you know, we'll discuss January in due time when it yeah. comes around to it, because obviously we've got a couple of games before mm-hmm. that and we're focusing on those games. But certainly, just to wrap up that question, is that obviously we want to try and add to it and get some a little bit more depth um, to the squad uh, because in terms of where we are as a team we feel that we can add a bit more depth to it really um, and we'll approach that when we come round to it but for now we'll keep focusing on the games that we've got coming up. You stuck to your guns with that sort of system that you wanted to, to use that that three five two, and um, obviously you've been saying it's it's not an, it's not like a light switch you know it is a process is a game and a result and a performance like the other day, how important is that? Try to get that into the players and try to show them this is a system that can work, this is a process that will work for us. Yeah, as as is other systems that can work. Mm-hmm. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say, Steve, that that's gonna be the one sole system you're gonna see this season. Um sometimes you select things and select players for his horses for courses. Um it's nice for them to see and a system that we've worked on uh, come through, but I think that's only come through because of the balance of the team and getting that right. Um, I think the system before has probably been there, but it's probably, I use the word, a bit clunky in terms of getting that fluidity to it. Um, what's just happened is players coming back from injury and training at a level and getting an air of degree of fitness um, has allowed that. And even now, Steve, with the team the way it is, I still think there's more fitness. I think there's more to come from the players. We demand more from the players. I think the players can give us more. Um, I think there's more ability in them to showcase it. I really do. Uh, And I keep pushing the squad and group of players along with my staff because there's more with them. And what we see in training, we want them to display more on a match day. 
Um, we know there's other contributing factors that can stop that. We agree, we know that that's football, but it's certainly something that we push in here uh, to continue seeing them level of improvements. Um, so that won't stop. Have you noticed a difference in them over the past couple of days after an uplifting result like that? Not a couple of days for me, Steve. Weeks. Yeah. Because in order to get to a result like that, I keep saying, and I use the word and it might sound boring, it's not a light switch. It doesn't happen like that. You simply don't. I've never known it in my career that something happens. We want it to happen like that. But in truth and reality, is it's a process what's going on. So you speak about the process and I know it's driven by results. Um, people won't see it through results but in order to get a result like that the other night there's a process going on where there's a learning there's a development uh, there's a plan um, and in terms of working with that plan you see it come through to fruition when there's contact towards the plan which is to be in the games um, and, and that's all we've seen really uh, from the other night but we know that there's still a lot of work to be done and we continue to work as a group of players and staff to continue to see that improvement you mentioned Chappers coming on as maybe a bit of a turning point and help lift the crowd and you know help them get behind the team. You could see when he came on, you know, Maxi gave him a big hug and Michal Helic welcomed him onto the pitch and various others as well. It's important to have those sort of experienced leaders around a young goalkeeper coming into the side for the first time like that. And I think as well, Steve, it shows the togetherness. Mm. You know, it's Maxi giving him a hug. Mish welcoming onto the pitch as the boys um, and then that sort of galvanises because from the crowd watching it galvanises because the, the supporters understood it as well really mm. and that for me if I use one word to encapsulate that one moment was togetherness on the pitch and in the in the in the stands and and I thank them all for it really because it was greatly received and appreciated and it and it certainly drove the team on um, and certainly when when our Huddersfield Town fans are in full voice, I've said it already, they're like the 12th man and it's greatly received by the players and the staff and myself and the pitch show. Um, so I thank them for that because it was a difficult situation made a lot easier by the support of the, by, by the home support. There's another championship debut, Loic came on. What, what have you seen from, from Loic and what, what qualities does he bring to the side? Like Loic, defender, um, wants to defend, um, a young lad has got a wonderful appetite and a desire for the game, uh, been chomping at the bit to want to be given an opportunity to play. He's been in and around the first team, he trains with us consistently uh, and I've seen improvement in training. That's been another youngster that's been injured at the first part when we came here and it's been a slow process for him in terms of getting the volume in training and getting him some B team games, which I think is at, at a level. So when we... Um, had to make changes later on in the game. I didn't hesitate to put him on, really. Um, I could have utilised him at even Swansea when we played Swansea away. I could have utilised him in that position and I, and I chose to go with Reg out there. So he's very firmly in my thoughts in terms of uh, when called upon to step in the first team duties. I don't see why he can't play and, and you caught a glimpse of him the other night. And again, himself along with Chapman, I didn't think put a foot wrong. Certainly in my mind, really, because we've just spoken to Utah, but he may well be going away for international duty for a few weeks. Um, is Loic one of the players, he's a centre-back by trade, one of the players who might be in line to, to step in and fill that, that gap? Yeah, and, and you know, we feel that, you know, we've got Loic, um, Reg, that can step in there, um, and we've got people that can utilise and deputise in that position, so we don't see no reason why um, should Utah go... Um, be part of this Asia Cup then we, we feel we've got people that can deputise in that position Is Matty Pearson at all likely to be back before you to, were to go away? No No, okay but, but how long are we looking at for, for Matty? Is he a um, long one? I, 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 if I gave you a time now Steve I'd be guessing really yeah. and that's why I'm just leaving it to the medical team okay. to, for them to tell me Okay um, Yeah, that's all from me Best luck for tomorrow Cheers Thank, thank you Cheers Steve We'll just come to Stuart Rayner from the Yorkshire Post on the Hiya Stu. Hi Darren, how are you doing? All right, thanks. Good, good. Just to um, to add to something you were just talking to with Stephen there, do, does adding a bit of the a bit of depth to the squad in January is that one of the key things to making it easier at least to 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 back up wins? 
Yeah, I, I think, I mean, Stu, I've, I've got the utmost respect for you, as you know, as, as that. But I mean, for me, in terms of addressing that, I just really want to focus on the games and just keep our focus there. Uh, obviously, when that window opens and we get talking, then obviously I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to answer those questions. But for now, it's just dealing with that. I've, I've just gave in Stephen that because just to give you like sort of a, a, a synopsis in terms of what we're looking at. But to go into real detail, uh, we just got this game coming up and we just want to keep the focus uh, on, on making sure that our, our main focus is on this game tomorrow. Fair enough. Um, and, and just on that, you know, we know the Championship is such a contrast of styles and you can regularly be facing a team on a Saturday who's totally different on a Tuesday. As it goes, is Norwich, Blackburn and Middlesbrough one of their, I won't say easy, but easier transitions in terms of they, they have similar football philosophies? Yeah, I could see that, um, Stu, to be fair. Um, but again, you know, all three teams have that footballing philosophy, yes, that DNA. Very different um, dynamics to the teams in terms of how they play. Um, but certainly one core element is is um, they want to play football, however you deem it, in the right way. Um, got good players, quality players, um, all got good managers um, that's all managed in, in the very highest level of this game in this country and their teams adopt that approach and that style. So for us um, here at, at Huddersfield, they're wonderful games for us to, to, to um, apply our own um, um, philosophies and, and dimension, dimensions to the game and our own thought process to the game and our own improvements to the game and that and most importantly our own ideas to go and win the game so those kind of things won't go away but it's something there are three games that we've really uh, the two that we've played previously before it and certainly this one coming up now is another one that uh, we're really looking forward to and, and Middlesbrough are a team who whether they play well or badly really create a lot of chances um, will it be a big do you expect there to be a spell in the game that's just a real big test of patience for, for the players and the, and the fans when Middlesbrough almost inevitably have a have a spell of pressure? Yeah, every, no, no matter what game you come to, Stu, there's, there's always uh, transitions in games. There's always a, a, a time where teams are in longer spells in possession of the game. And, you know, um, I remember I see us going to Norwich last week and Norwich starting the game very, very strongly. And after 10, 15 minutes, we having a sustained spell in the game where we was controlling the game and, and dominant of the ball. Same when we went to away to Millwall in terms of dominating the, the ball. So there's times in, in the game where it flips both ways for both teams. Um, obviously, you always want the more possession of the ball because it means that you're dominating and controlling the game longer. But there is elements of the game as well off the ball where you can still control the game off the ball, uh, and both transitions in and out of possession is just as important as as one another. So yes, sometimes you call for patience um, because that, that's how the, that's football. It's football. It happens. Um, but what you don't want to do is in those moments is making sure that your concentration levels are spot on uh, in both moments, and I think that's what uh, the players need to see and feel. And just to go back to you, if I may, because we, we did speak to him earlier, it's a little bit similar to the question I asked you about Jack Rodoni the other day, but do you, do you feel that whilst you've got some, you've got a lot of very good central good central defenders, he gives you just that, something that little bit different, probably in possession? Yeah, and and, and that's what you, you've ultimately saw, really, in, in terms of the central defenders that we got here. Um I do like them individually and collectively because they've all got their own individual strengths, but also bringing them together collectively have added to each other. Um, they all get on really well with each other. They've got a wonderful camaraderie with each other and a togetherness and a spirit between them. And they're honest um, and they are um, self-critical of themselves, mostly when they don't get it right. But also the biggest thing is they give each other wonderful praise when when they do get it right and help each other, which is really good. And, and for, for somebody what's a former centre-back myself, it's great to see that with them. Um, so long may that continue and, keep, and they push each other, which is another important thing, which is important for them in terms of their progression and getting better. 
Um, so for that option, we've got good options in, at, at central defence. Um, and long may that uh, continue for the football club. And ju- just from a from a central defensive um, perspective, because obviously that is your big area of expertise. Do you think it's it's more important when you play with a three that you don't just have three stoppers? You have you have one who's able to give you a bit more in possession, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, but all three of them, the way the game is today, you can't just be a one-trick pony in terms of being an out-and-out defender. I think there's a there's a bit now that the, the demands on it now is to be good with the ball at your feet as well. Even though you want them defenders to do does what it says on the tin and defend first and foremost, when they've got the t- ball at their feet and they've got time and space, they've got to use that ball really, really well. And it's, it's another area of the game that's changed uh, drastically uh, over the years and seasons and will continue to um, change now in terms of uh, what's, what's asked and demanded of the players and no different from the central defenders. Do you think, do you think that needs a different mindset maybe then to the, the mindset that, that you needed to have as a player? Yeah, and, and, and the mindset is different because um, there is a different now coming as a as a manager and understanding the, the game and how the games move from probably from when I was playing. Um, there is a different mindset uh, and the mindset is being sort of um, critical with with the ball and still being critical off the ball because a kick gang, Stu, both sides of the game is so important. Um, I don't think you can just be one dimensional team because there's elements that we've spoken about one team gaining control of the ball and one team doing work off the ball and vice versa so that means with the defending of the team structure it's got to be right and though we're talking about the central defenders and the defence as a unit we talk about the team as a whole really in terms of when we score goals we score as a team and if we concede we concede as a team it's not just down to individuals and just one on Silver Thomas, if I may, who obviously had a big game for you the other day, and we know um, what a big player he can be in this division. How 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 close is he? Are you to getting the best out of Silver Thomas at the moment? Do you think? I still think there's more to come from him. I think I think the biggest thing we can agree with Sorber is the consistency he's shown since we've come in the building, and that's credit to him and his temperament. And while ever a player shows the temperament that Sorber so shows. We can always work with that. Um, he's an individual that's really driven. He's an individual that's never happy in terms of where he's at, even though with what he's contributed thus far this season. And he's an individual that wants to max out this season. Whatever you've got that ingredient stew in any individual and team, number one, it's good for the individual, but number two as well, um, it exuberates through the team um, in terms of his performances. And for him to show the level that he's showing at the moment, and the determination and the leadership in terms of his performance, um, that's always a, a, a wonderful ingredient to have. And we'd always echo that even more. So it's credit to him. Um, and um, no, he's a joy to work with. And, and I still think there's more to come from him. So, so if, if you've mentioned it a couple of times how driven he is, as, you, as you're learning to manage these players, is he someone who needs to to always be pushed then if he's, if he's driven maybe a bit more than some players who need an arm around them yeah we drive all of them none of them get away with it really Stu because I think I don't think I think every day there's a there's a there's an opportunity to learn and develop and I, and I think as a footballer and it goes for myself if ever you look to stand still I think people can get a, get a march on you and my, my job is driven to improve is to consistently push the group and to make them better players and to make them as better individuals and collectively as a, as a team. And that requires day on day in, day out work and it doesn't stop. Um, and that's the way I see it and, and we'll continue to see it that way uh, for improvement. And the reason why I say that is because success is a moving target. So um, whatever you deem it is, is continuously moving. So you, you never ever set in one position uh, and thinking that that'll do because it never does. Um, the game we played against Blackburn's been and gone. It's going to take new measures in terms of tomorrow evening and a different type of game tomorrow evening. And it, it'll cause for a different, whole new, different kind of skill sets for everybody concerned for the game and connected with the game. Well, thank you very much for your time. Have a happy new year, Darren. Thank you very much, Stu. Happy new year. Uh, and just finally, we'll come to Jim Conlon. 
Hi, uh, Darren. Darren, you mentioned Delano and Rodell, as you passionately know him, and we're talking about him because he's scoring goals. But if there's one area that you could think he could really improve his game, would that be maybe in the final third? Maybe he's trying to beat the opponent in the box maybe one too often. Should he be getting it out of his feet that bit quicker and getting shots on? Is it in terms of... He, he's the ability of a wide man. He a wide man and attacker. He's an awful lot of flair to his game. But sometimes does he just do a bit too much flair in the box? I think Jim for for Dell really is. We saw both aspects of him being just as effective in terms of him him getting in the box and getting his shots off. But him getting in the box and creating that space with him in terms of in his one v one situations. But one thing what we'll agree with him scoring goals or taking multiple touches, he's, he's been effective for the team. And I think that's one thing that we can all agree with looking at his game. And I don't think much of us would take much away from his game because in terms of that, it's been um, a thorn in opposition's defences and it's been a, um, a wonderful attacking acquisition to us. So long may that continue, but I think the, the final ingredient with that is that he continues to score goals or assist goals like he did the other night. Yeah, I suppose it's that unpredictability that you're really sort of depending so and he keeps defenders guessing because they just don't know if he's going to get it out of his feet or is he going to try and take, come on and beat him again. And that can be difficult for any defender to defend against um, in terms of, like you said, is he going to shoot or is he going to pull the ball back um, or is he going to um, expose and eliminate the, a, an opponent in a 1v1 situation. So he's got all that uh, unpredictability to his play but it's certainly effective for us when it does come off I suppose Darren that Christmas period we mentioned obviously playing Blackburn Norwich Mills were to come and in Leicester in terms of preparing preparing for these games given the short sort of distance given Mills well to Leicester now in between games is it really sort of downtime, recovery, and maybe a sort of video session, a tactical sort of session? Because I imagine that whatever work you've done now for Millsborough is probably the work you've probably done for Leicester, given that there's no real time really to get players back onto a session again. So is it almost you're taking games in, in twos rather than ones when you're looking at them? No, no. Um, it's taking it in, in one still um, and making sure that we're loading all our energies into this particular game. Yes, there's been a real quick turnaround for Blackburn and that's why you have to quickly dust yourself down after the Blackburn game and literally, Jim, the next morning it's on to the next it's on to the next game which sees us playing against Middlesbrough. Um and it'll be the same again. Once you finish the game at Middlesbrough tomorrow night, we'll wait get up on um I'm losing my days, I think it's Saturday morning, and then it's focusing on to the next game. So before we get to that the, the the attention and detail was to recover the players, to get them turned around really quickly. And then probably, like everybody else, probably have 24, 48 hours to prepare for another game uh, in terms of making sure that we're, in, we, we're right and ready to go again tomorrow evening. Yeah, and Darren, in terms of the youngsters that are on the bench that are getting their opportunity over this hectic Christmas period, uh, trying to keep them prepped and keep them on their toes. Uh, some of them wondering, will they get the chance? Some of them might be getting a few minutes. In terms of, you probably know yourself during the Christmas period that you they will all be called upon at one sort of stage. Is that sort of hard maybe for them who are going through their first Christmas calendar, some of these youngsters, and in terms of the championship, to try and say, listen, you got to be focused. There could be a period now. It could come today. It could come uh, against Leicester City. It could come uh, basically with 10, 15 minutes to go that you could be called on, given the amount of resources and the expenditure that the, some of the senior legs have put into their legs so far. Agreed, Jim, once again. And, and the message has always been to the younger players, but not just the younger players, the group as a whole, in terms of being absolutely ready at any given point. Um, it's the way we've always trained the group and continue to train the group and the message that we've always applied to the group on a consistent basis um, and even more so now with the succession of games in a, in a small period of time. Um, so the younger players are ready and, and hopefully you'd have saw a little bit of that with Jacob and Loic coming on the other night and playing their part as two younger players in the team. And there's still other younger players added to the, the squad 
that if needed to call upon um, they, they're, they're thrown into a situation where even with their tender young ages they're asked to come of age real quick with a maturity and they've, they've shown that but it's, we feel that that's the messages we've been giving to them Jim on a daily basis on a consistent basis um, and that's what we, we look at them they are young players but they're in the first team fold for a reason because they're good enough to be in the first team fold I suppose, Darren, as we mentioned, you reflected it on it earlier, but just to finish off, in terms of the year itself, in terms of uh, 2023, an awful lot of highs and off with some lows and then more highs again for you. Are, are you in, Are you looking where you were last year to this year? Would you swap it or are you sort of very comfortable in terms of where you are? Do you think this is a natural progression for you in the football world and everything happens for a reason and this is where you find yourself today? For me, Jim, it's it's a maxing out in every opportunity given, and I certainly look back on the year as a as a as a wonderful year in terms of um, what's gone on in the year, and then the highs have been fantastic. We've worked incredibly hard to achieve those, and on the lows, there's been a massive learning in terms of in, enabling to gain the highs. I often say it's in the low points where in the games where you probably learn the most and develop the most and unfortunately we none of us want to go through them but it's in those times that you learn and develop the most and it's just the way it is so in all those situations i've always looked upon it as an opportunity to what have we learned what can we gain from it where have we developed from it in terms of going forward so that things like that don't happen again and and that's ultimately what i've maintained with it uh, but certainly I look back on the year and, and I certainly want to look back at the turn of the new year knowing that we maxed out as much as we could in 2023 and what things have we learnt from 2023 that we can take into 24 and continue to progress and move forward. Um, and it's certainly, for, certainly for me, as an individual that never really want to stand still. I'm always open and, and receptive to listen to ideas and different um, options and try different things. And I think that's where the learning comes from, um, whilst always maintaining that competitive edge, you know, and, and that's always will be and continue to be. So, so yeah, we're still in 2023, so there's still a lot to learn, even though we've we come to the final days of it, there's still so much to learn with it, Jim. And, and um, yeah, when 2024 comes, then we'll, we'll accept it for where it's at. Well, Darren, if I don't speak to you again until 2024, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you, buddy. Cheers, Jim, and you too. Oh, same, same to you lot, guys. Cheers, and we'll see you tomorrow evening. Excellent. Yeah, Thank cheers, Darren. Happy New Year. Take care. Thank you.